lift up both hands, you're completely surrendering everything that you are to whoever you're surrendering to. And right here in this moment, we're surrendering to God. Our mind, our will, our emotions, our life. The scripture actually says to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, and well-pleasing to him. So right here in this moment, God, we surrender to you. We give our all to you. We say that you can use us. We're available in this season. We're available in this moment. God, use our hands. Use our feet. Use our mouth to bring peace, to bring strength, to bring joy, to bring restoration. God, you use us. We're surrendering our all to you right here. We say not our will be done, but God, your will be done. Come on, can you say not my will be done, but your will be done in my life. In the name of Jesus. And everybody that agrees with that, say amen. amen. Come on, do you love Jesus today? Amen. He's so good. We're so thankful. We're so grateful that God sent Jesus so that we could be available to worship in this place freely and to surrender our lives to him once again. Amen. 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 There's a few things that are going to be happening here from from here on out throughout the service and the next thing you're going to see a summer camp video and then our dance team is going to dance so cheer them on get real loud for them and then you're going to hear a few testimonies from our students all right you can be seated thank you How many praise and worshipers do we have in this building? No, mm -mm. I don't think y'all heard me. I said, how many praise and worshipers do we have in this building today? All right, all right. See, the Bible says that we're called to praise and worship like David did, right? So that means that we're called to shout like David shout. We're called to dance like David danced. We're called to run around, spin around, jump, sing. So that means that's the least that we can do to praise, to give honor to our Father, to our healer, to our Savior. And that's the least that we can do, all right? So that's what we about to do. We finna sing like David sung today. We finna dance like David danced today, all right? So I'm gonna need y'all to help me a little bit. Can y'all do that? Yeah. Can y'all do that? Yeah. All right, all right.
Hey, I think he in politics. Hey, I think you get in my drift. Hey, yeah, I think he made the explore page. I seen him at my last court date. I'm asking, Lord, give me more faith. It's cold in these street like a nose. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready. You ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. But I was going to dance right there. I was about to do it. But, huh? They ain't ready. Only thing I know is the crib walk. <laughs> and y'all don't know nothing about that. See, y'all don't know nothing about it. <laughs> hey, no. Uh-uh. My wife's going to come up here in a minute. She's going to call some teenagers up here and um, let them testify. But before we do that, there's a scripture that was on our heart and on my heart for summer camp and so many different things happened there. And one of them is a very familiar passage to everyone in the building today. And it's found in Ezekiel. Anybody ever heard of Ezekiel before? Wave at me if you have. Anybody's right hand works. If your right hand works, wave it at me right here. Yeah, just, okay, good. So just to paraphrase that, what happened right there is God brought Ezekiel back to a valley. You know when you got to go back to a valley. And when you go back to a valley like this, it's probably not the kind of valley you want to go back to. And if anybody knows a little bit of the story, you know what I'm talking about. But in this valley, there was a valley full of dry bones and skeletons. And in that valley, there was, there was dry bones and skeletons everywhere scattered across the whole valley. And Ezekiel was like, do you think these dry bones can live again? He actually told God, you already know the answer to that question. Come on, this is the same God that breathed life and into Adam and the same God that breathed his life into you, the same God that raised the dead, healed the sick, opened blind eyes. Can these dry bones live again? And I want you to think in this moment what we're dealing with and what we're facing right now. And my question is, can these dry bones live again? And so God told Ezekiel, you got to prophesy over these dry bones. So I'm telling every person in this building today and watching online, you got to get the word of God on your situation. I'm not sure what everybody's dealing with here in this moment, but I know God does. And if you can get a word on it, somebody shout, get a word on it. And then you got to prophesy to those dry bones. So Ezekiel began to prophesy, and the skeletons, a long story short, y'all know the end of the story. The skeletons started to come back together again. The bones started to rattle. Come on, there was a shaking. There was a rattling. I believe if there's anything we need right now is the bones need to rattle. And once the bones begin to rattle and come back together again, Then flesh began to come on. Are you following me right now? It's a valley full of dry bones. The skeletons are put back together. They're finding their proper place in the body. And then flesh started to come on their bones. And now all of a sudden they're, 
They're like a body, but they're still not living. The scripture says they're just laying there with flesh on their bones. But I've got good news for you. We still serve the same God today that they were serving back in the day. And when God said he was going to breathe life into those. Come on, I'm not sure if I'm at church today. When God said, I'm going to breathe life into those bodies. And then all of a sudden, they, they were living again. So God turned a valley. Somebody shall live again. Come on, somebody shall live again. I want you to think about the situation we're in right now and shout, live again. Because I've got news for you. Our city has got to live again. Our schools have got to live again. Our churches have got to live again. Us as individuals, screw the opinion and live again. We got to live again. God turned a valley of dry bones, the scripture said, into a great army. God can turn a valley of dry bones into a great army again. That's the God that we serve today. Now, y'all know what we're dealing with. It's real. It is real as real can be. But I'm here to tell you today, God is still good enough. God is still big enough. God is still mighty. God is still on the throne today. And if you would just prophesy and speak to your situation, the bones can come alive again. And I was thinking about even months ago, we're trying to figure out if we're going to be able to have camp or not. We could have made a decision in that moment, you know, things are shutting down, things are going crazy. But there's a generation that needed that moment. They not only needed that moment for then, they needed that moment to sustain them for now and for the days to come. So I'm so thankful that God made a situation that looked impossible, God made it possible. And I know you're thankful about that too. Look at us, we're in a building today. We're gathered together today. But I will say this, and Pastor Aaron said this all along. We are the church. And they can try to do all they can try to do, but they cannot shut your mouth. They cannot shut your mouth. It reminds me of a story, baby. You better come on up here. It reminds me of a story of Paul and Silas. They tied them up. They bound them to the dungeon of dungeons of dungeons, but they didn't put anything over their mouth. That's where they failed. They may try to tie you up. They may try to strap you up, but they cannot shut your mouth. The last thing the body of Christ needs to do is be silent. Everybody shout, live again. Come on, shout, live again. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Thank you so much for your finances, for your financial help, for your prayers. If you only knew. We felt it, and we needed it, and we conquered. And we go from victory to victory from here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good, man. We had such an incredible week, a week of surrender, a week of just turning our lives, turning our will over to the Lord and saying, Lord, not what we want, but what you want and what you need from us. We are um, going to cooperate with you, with what you have for us. And man, we're just super thankful um, that this week happened. And before yeah. we even left, um, you know, throughout making decisions and all of that, I mean, the Spirit of God just spoke real strong that this has to happen. He even spoke the word vital. It is vital for these people, not only for the young people, but for the youth leaders and the youth pastors. I mean, I can't even tell you. We would literally get done preaching a message, and we would have like these long messages, you know, on 
and just however they could send them to us from youth pastors and leaders who were like, man, that word was just for me. And so if you think about when leadership gets strengthened, yeah. they can go out and have an influence on the people that are under them and they can strengthen them. Right. And so, man, this week was so necessary. Um, it was just incredible. And we are super, super thankful um, that y'all were praying and that you were behind us, man. That means a whole, whole lot to us, amen. And so at this time, I'm gonna call up some people to testify. Um, Gracelyn, if you can come up, Dylan, Annalicia, Brooklyn, Chloe, Caden, Adon, Avery, Peyton, Greg, Jaden, Macy, Grace, if y'all could come on up. Thank y'all. Give them a big hand as they come forward, y'all. What the enemy meant for evil, yes. God can completely turn it around. Praise God. <laughs> and when he turns something around, it smells like victory. Amen. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he asked me if I wanted some Taco Bell after service. That's all. <clears throat> Greg, come on up here. Give Greg a big hand, y'all. How y'all doing? First, I just want to give a, a hand to Pastor Matt and Pastor Angie for what they did for camp. You too, Pastor Matt. Uh, I had a good time at camp. I learned a lot. I got a lot of stuff. I couldn't even tell y'all all the stuff I got. But for me, you know, I, um, I went to camp. Like, I was excited to go, you know, get out the house. <laughs> but, um... But, like, I mean, I've been in church my whole life, so I knew all about God. Like, I was saved, I know. And I wasn't, I want to say, like, I was running away from God. But at the same time, I just, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't really want to do what God, what God told me to do. Because I felt like there was no fun in that. There was no freedom in that. There were no girls in that. <laughs> that ain't true, let me tell you, but I'm so stop. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, and so, um. That's, that was just my mindset, like, like I don't want to go to, like, going to church is fine, but throughout the week, like, I'm not going to do what God's telling me to do because he ain't going to, like, that's not going to be fun. That's not, I'm not going to be free. I want to do what I want to. But at the same time in my life, I realized just things were just, like, I was struggling, like, in my finances and, like, my mind and my relationships. And I was just, like, the harder I worked, the harder things would become for me. Like, and I realized I just couldn't do it on my own, you know? But God has a grace for you in his plan, you know? And so at camp, uh, I think Pastor Trent, he asked, like, does anybody, does anybody feel like they have a call to ministry? And it was just tugging on my heart. It was tugging on my heart. And so I, I, I feel like I did. And so I accepted my call to ministry. And I feel like in that, and I feel like in that, uh, God will provide anything I need and anything I want, so, and he'll use me to bless other people, which is always a great thing to do. So yeah, that's what I got for camp. I thank Pastor Matt for preaching into me all this time, and uh, yeah, thank God. Amen, love you. Yes, it's not very scary. Just don't even look at their faces. Okay, so I'm a little hoarse. Um, so about a year and a half ago, um, I was here and I seen a lot of people speaking in tongues. Well, ever since that day, I've been praying and praying and praying that I could speak in tongues. Well, last year at camp, my, my friend Trista, she got spe uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and I was just like, oh God, like, why aren't you giving that to me? Like, why, why is she getting, why is everyone around me getting it but me? And so this year at camp, um, Pastor Angie and Aaron Cody uh, prayed with me, and I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And the main thing was I was trying to overthink something that was so little. And, yeah, okay, and then one more. Okay, so um, I can't remember who was preaching about it, but, oh, by the way, when I got filled, it was Wednesday night. Um and I think it was Wednesday, the day, like the morning or something, someone was preaching about um, what you're called to be. And so 
I've always been like, well, I'm not called to ministry. Like, I, I don't feel called to that. Well, I've always wanted to go in like the medical field or whatever. And so like God called me to do oncology. And so I, they were preaching about how like you, a ministry. And so I was like, well, that's not gonna serve God. Like I can't serve God through oncology. And then they were telling us about how like you don't, you don't have to just do it in the church. You can do it if you're a businessman. You can do it if you're a doctor. You can do it in all kinds of stuff. So I just got out called to do oncology. So yeah. And I, okay. So Brooke Kendrick, she isn't here. Y'all know the one with the boot. Okay. So she was going to, uh, this is her testimony. I didn't think I was going to be able to play college basketball anymore because my foot recovery was taking too long and taking longer than I planned. I was feeling kind of hopeless, but I just kept on praying at church camp. Everyone prayed for me. And one night a Don came up to me and told me to take off my boot. I thought he was crazy. I just, I just trust in God and took off my boot. Now I no longer need a brace or a boot to walk. I haven't needed medication in my foot and haven't, it hasn't been swollen since. Also, ever since last year, me and my friend have prayed to speak in tongues and this year we received that gift. God is so good. So good, y'all. She kicked the boot off and don't need it no more. I didn't know if you heard that or not. Okay, y'all don't, y'all don't sit down and heard it. All right, come on up here. Hey, y'all. I'm Chloe. <laughs> y'all are going to have to bear with me. My voice is in and out. So. Um, so this year at camp, I went very confused. I didn't really know what I wanted or what God was having for me because for a while now, I've been in church my whole life, just like Greg said. So feel like I knew what it was to be saved, knew what it, but whenever I was praying or asking God for something and it wouldn't happen, I was like, why aren't you, why aren't you talking to me anymore? Where did you go? I'm sorry, y'all. So I'm asking him and I'm like, where did you go? And I'm confused. So I get to camp and I'm like, God, if you don't talk to me now, then I don't know if you're real. How many of y'all know that God does not give us confusion? That is from the devil all the way. So I get there, and I feel like I, the first night, I mean, oh, my gosh, he completely hit me. And I think it might have been Wednesday night, Pastor Aaron, he preached a message about a turning point, and I'd never heard any message like that before in my life, which is crazy because I've been in church my whole life. And I feel like God just, like, hit me in the stomach said you've been questioning me and my plan and my existence for a long time but just know to stand and that I love you with all my heart and I just those are some words that I needed they were so small but so perfect and on time so I mean I've never worshipped I don't even know how to explain it but it felt like the Holy Spirit just completely took over my whole being and whatever God wanted me to do in that moment I was going to do whatever God wanted me to say I was going to say and I accepted the call in my life to be an evangelist <laughs> so <laughs> I know it's not going to be all flowers and daisies but I know that with God life is going to be good so amen <laughs> so good amen Hi, sorry, my voice has been a little dry. But for the past year, I've been struggling with um, self-hate and my mental health was not doing good at all. And last year, God told me that I was being called to sing, like the word of God, spread the word of God. And I just like, I thought that I just wasn't good enough for that. Like when I hear like Aaliyah and April sing, it's like beautiful. And I felt like I just, I couldn't compare to that. And so I just like, started speaking all this bad stuff about myself like I didn't believe in myself and I would tell myself these things every single day like no matter if it was about singing like if it was about my beauty like I just wasn't confident in myself at all and so I came to camp and I I don't know what I was expecting I wasn't really expecting much and so on the first night um you know it was just a normal service you know God was speaking to me but it wasn't like it wasn't really answering to my problems that I was having. So after service, my friend Brooke Kendrick, she comes up to me, she's like, can I talk to you? I was like, yeah, sure. 
and she was telling me how I don't need to feel like I'm worthless all the time and that God loves me and he put me on this earth for a reason. I have so many things that I need to look forward to far ahead of time and that I can preach the word of God to so many people who actually need it and I can be an inspiration to everyone. And I don't need to compare myself to anybody because I am beautiful in my own way and God loves me for who I am. And so I just like, that was so powerful. Like it was working in me so strong and that was one of the best nights I've ever had. Like I hadn't felt that good in a year, like a year and it was amazing. So then the next night at praise and worship, the devil just like came at me so like, so strong, like beating on me, like powerful than it ever has been. So he was hitting on me so hard that in the middle of praise and worship, I just couldn't do it anymore. And so I had to step out, I had to sit down like I couldn't do it and it was like all in my own head, like I couldn't focus, I couldn't get my mind off of it. So after praise and worship, Avery comes up to me, she's like, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. Even though I wasn't in my head, I was like, I need to stop saying I'm fine when I'm really not, like I've had enough, like this is done, I can't do this anymore. So then we start singing another song and I go back in praise and worship and I see everybody taking a knee and it was just really on my heart and like I should take a knee right now. So I take a knee and God was just, he was telling me like all those things, like I am special, I am worth everything. Like he loves me forever and I have this gift and I need to use it and I don't have to feel like I'm worthless. And he just spoke on me so strong and after that I haven't had one bad thought and I've been so confident in myself. <laughs> and I don't, need, I don't need anybody else to tell me except for God. I don't need no boys to tell me. I don't need anybody to tell me because I'm confident in my own way and he loves me for who I am. So yeah. <laughs> so good, so good. And she came all the way from Phoenix, Arizona to go to summer camp. That's amazing, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, Avery. <laughs> okay, um, my name's Avery. For most of y'all probably know, but for people who don't, my parents are Aaron and Aaron. They're the pastors of this church. And um, at camp, like, um, for those who don't know, for like the past, I think about like three years, I've been on the same exact stage saying the same exact thing, which was God's freed me like from like depression, anxiety, self-affliction, suicidal thoughts, actions, attempts, like all of that. And I have to say this again, that God freed me from that yet again, which I know is like really good. And I'm like, I'm really happy. And like, I know that like every year I keep on saying that, like, I was like, I'm never going back. But I keep on going back. Like, I keep on falling in the pit over and over and over again. I keep on getting more and more depressed, more and more and more again. I keep on hurting myself over and over and over again. Even though God told me I don't have to do that. But I still do it. And I was like, I, like, I don't understand. Like, God, you say that you're real. You appear so real to me at times like this. But whenever I go home, I feel hopeless and lost and alone. And no one's there. And I just... Like, I continue to, like, hurt myself, feeling like that's the only way out after God told me that wasn't the way. And, and what my mom was preaching about, no strings, no strings on me. And I finally had to, so, like, me and my whole room, we wrote down, like, strings. And I wrote down, like, all the strings that I had. And I, I felt like God would judge me. But God said, no, this is good because mine was full of strings. Mine was so many strings. And I felt, oh, my God, I'm this horrible person. And God was like, no, it's the devil telling you to do all this. Because the thing the devil will do is, like, he'll tell you, do this, do this, do this, and I'll do it. And as soon as I do it, he makes you feel ashamed. He makes you feel ashamed about it after he told you to do it. And so, like, God, like, the devil will be like, cut yourself. It'll make you feel better. I do it. it. And then he'll be like, oh, my God, I can't believe you did it again. Didn't God already tell you you didn't have to do that? So, like, I feel like in, like, this hopeless pit. And so we wrote down all these strings, and I, we all tore it up, and we flushed it in the toilet. The day after, the last day of camp, we flushed it in the toilet. And on the day of camp, the same day that Brooke got healed was whenever I got my, um, whenever I got set free. Like, I didn't, te I didn't, like, technically, like, pray for me. They were praying for healing. But whenever I stopped focusing on myself and I focused on, like, Brooke getting her healing, I got mine in the process like I didn't even have to be like God please save me please save me please save me I was like God please heal Brooke heal Brooke heal, heal Brooke and God was like see once you start focusing on other people this is your calling do you understand that and I was like I guess <laughs> so we flushed it on the toilet and now I no longer like have the urge to do any of it like because like even after like I left camp like I'd be like in like in like the moment at camp I feel like every kid at camp can relate to this like it's like Yes, I'm never doing that ever again. I'm never going to hurt myself. I'm never going to do this with that boy ever again. 
And then as soon as you leave camp, you're just like, well, I mean, we're out of camp, but I guess it doesn't matter anymore. And that's what happened these last three years is I was like, it doesn't matter anymore. So like, I just go do it again. And mom said, my mom said, you can kick against the, you can kick, kick against like the calling of what God's telling you to do. God's telling me, stop doing this. It's not right. It's a sin. It's a sin. It's a sin. And then you'll live in this cage called freedom. I thought I was living in freedom, sneaking around for my parents, thinking that cutting myself was going to help. Doing this thing with that boy was going to like make me feel more loved. And that's just gets kicking against the calling. And I called it freedom. It was not freedom. It made me depressed. That's not freedom. That was hurting myself. That was feeling alone. Alone isn't freedom. And Trent also said there's power in community. Being alone is not power. Being in, together like this is a community. This is where you get your power. This is where you get your freedom. And I also like accepted like the calling because like I kick, I kick against this calling since I was like four years old. I kick against this calling to like be called to the ministry. I just kick, kicked against it. I thought this is not at all what I want to do. This is like because like, the world's telling me this is not what you want to do. Like you see all these people like doing whatever they want, sleeping with whoever they want, doing whatever they want, smoking whatever they want, and they look like they're so happy. And then once you finally start getting like a taste of that life, I'm not happy. Like, but then whenever I went to camp, I got like set free from all that. I literally just looked at all my friends in that circle. I was like, you guys, I'm happy. I haven't been happy in years. I've not been like truly like 100% happy. I've always been a little bit empty. And I just looked at them. I just started crying. I was like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Like I've never been happy like this in so long. And so I finally like got set free from depression, anxiety, self-affliction, suicidal thoughts, actions, other sinful things. Like even like the littlest thing as like listening to bad music, I completely stopped. Like I have like this whole playlist of just horrible music on my phone. I completely deleted it. I don't, I haven't listened to it at all, which is kind of crazy. Cause like, it seems like such a little thing, but it has such a big impact on you. Like once you listen to like, like this new song that a guy comes out with, that's like rap. And I'll be like, oh, this is cool. Everyone listens to this. But then like you listen to the lyrics and I sing it over my life and I start living the same thing that they're talking about and they're dead. I don't want to do that. Like that's not going to help me. It's like once I like I listen to like literally Christian music, like anyone who's been in my car like since camp, you have not heard a single like rap song. It's literally been like strictly Christian music. And I've just been, it just makes me overwhelming and happy. And I've never felt this way before. It doesn't seem like. I'm like, well, dang, I feel like I don't feel forced to do it. I'm doing it on my own free will, and it feels so amazing. And what I'm declaring over me, and what it would be a lot if y'all declared this over me too, is this will be my last time on this stage saying I'm free from depression. I just want to be done with it. This is the last time I'm going to be up here saying that God freed me from this. I just want to be done with it. I'm done with depression. I'm done with anxiety. I'm done with self-affliction. I'm done with all these sinful things of this world that the, that the devil tells me is freedom, I'm done. It doesn't mean the devil won't trip you up. He will still try to trip you up, but God will always be there. So don't think that even if like your boyfriend breaks up with you, your friends leave you, God's always going to be there regardless who else is there. And that's the only one you need. Just like Brooke said, you only need God. You only need him. So this is my last time on the stage, you guys. And the next time you'll see me on the stage is whenever I'm preaching. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Caden, so good. Okay, um, I don't really know how I'm going to start this off, but it was around the ninth grade summer. I had started going to, like, parties and doing drugs and stuff, and I, I didn't, like, think at the time it was, like, a bad thing. I just thought it was fun. And then 10th grade came around, 10th grade summer came around. I started doing it over and over, going to every party, doing all these things, sleeping with people, just doing stuff I shouldn't have been doing. I knew I was in the wrong, but I never really cared to change myself. And then I started, like, taking church seriously once I met Avery, and I started coming to, like, all these different church services and stuff. And I, like, I wanted to change, like, for her, but I also wanted to change for me. And then she had introduced me to DYC, and um, I knew DYC was going to change my life, but at the same time, like, I didn't know how. Like, I've never had God speak to me. I've never, like, prayed in tongues. I've never did any of that. I didn't even know what that meant. And I had went to camp, and it was the night Josh was praying over me, Austin, and Avery, and God told me, he told me that you don't need drugs to cope with pain and cope with heartache.
heartbreak and cope with all that. You need me. If you fully surrender yourself to me, that I will help you and I will be the guide of your life. And all you have to do is walk in my will and I will do as you please. And ever since that day, like I've never had the urge to go back. I've never been for anything of it. And I've just, I've never wanted to go back since that day. You'll never go back. Amen. It's Kate. Jaden. What's up, y'all? My name's Jaden. How y'all doing? Um, let's see, camp. It was a great experience. Um, going into camp, I really wasn't expected anything from God, you know, just going to the beach, hanging out with people and stuff. But um, I feel like I was running away from the calling all my life and going down a deep and dark road. And coming out of camp, I feel like I'm closer to God. Um, I feel uplifted. I feel good. Um, I just feel like I'm closer to God. And uh, I want to thank y'all for helping me get there and getting the chance to do it. And I want to thank God. So love y'all. Amen. Adon. Hi. I'm Adon. And... um. For a while, I've, I've known my calling. I know I knew my calling was into like being a, like a minister, you know, like a pastor. But I always thought that it was like children's pastor because my parents are children's pastors, and I love the children's ministry. But uh, this week, God was telling me He was like, "You're gonna be an adult pastor." Yeah, because that's what it's called. Um, <laughs> uh, and I was like, "All right, okay then, I guess." And then. I was like, so God, why have I been in children's ministry? Why have I I've been doing children's ministry for so long? Why, why do I feel so drawn to this? And he's like, it's because it's a stepping stone. It's a, it's a place that you have to be before you can get to this, this area of your life. And he so, told me about all these people in the Bible. He said, no one in the Bible did anything without the preparation. And like he, he showed me like David and how David spent like his time in the fields uh, praying and worshiping to God. He wrote all these songs. And then he, when he was... David the shepherd boy, he then became David the, the king, King David. And then he showed me Peter and how Peter spent three years with Jesus, three intimate years with like the savior and how then after that he was able to preach to over 3,000 people. And like, so he, he said like the best preparation, uh, the best preparation time is with, when you're with Jesus. When you're, when you're with Jesus, you're able to prepare and grow into what God has for you. So. Love you brother. Um, first of all, camp was amazing. And <laughs> I uh I just couldn't really, you know, understand like my thoughts. Well, I couldn't like, okay, so there's a thing. God and my thoughts, I couldn't tell the difference between, like, what I was thinking and what God was saying to me. So at camp, I just got on my knees during worship, and I was like, uh, like, can you speak to me? Like, are you there? And he just started giving me all these words to speak and, like, just told me that, I was gonna be in the ministry and I never thought that. But uh, he said that and then he started giving me like, be a billboard for me because like when you see it, he just started showing me like all these billboards like McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. And I was like, well, why the heck are you showing me this? So I just started praying about it and he said, I want you to do that for me. I want you to advertise for me. And so that's when I knew right there that I was going to be in the ministry. And so I shared that. And then he gave me another word, and it was like, don't hesitate. So he just said, get on the stage and share it. So I asked my dad if I could say something, and I said it. And, like, at least 30 people came up to me after that service and said their week would not have been the same without that don't hesitate word. So... Um, I just encourage y'all to pray and read your Bible and get closer to God every day because he's there and he's never going to leave you and he has a plan for your life. And it's your choice. 
He can't make the choice for you. He died for you, but he can't make the choice that you're gonna follow his plan or you're gonna go your own way. Because when you go your own way, 100% of the time, it's not gonna be better than God's way. No matter how bad it seems in that moment, if you just do it, there's gonna be blessings along the way. Amen. Anna. Um, before I went to camp, I was depressed. And uh, it was kind of hard for me because I didn't really have that many friends that could help me through it. Because I was like, uh, no one really understood what I was going through. Uh, my, I just said bad stuff in my head. I used to, like, I couldn't... <laughs> tell people how I felt and, and, and everything. I'm sorry. God was my calling. I'm sorry, I'm babbling, but uh, me being, saying bad stuff in my head was blocking me from my calling and trying to, God was trying to tell me what he want me to do in my life. And for so long, I just pushed it away. I was like, I don't, I can't do that. I can't do that. I won't do that. And God was, and God told me, um, I, I, I write poems and poetry a lot now and about my feelings and how I feel. And uh, it helps me a lot now and, uh, and everything. But, uh, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, God told me to write a book wanted me to write a book so I uh, so I can show everybody his word but uh, I think it was when we came back I started writing the book and it was so great guys it was so great and um, and I was writing and I would just let him flow through me and it was it was just amazing and I was reading back onto it he was like um, I said God who is this book for because it's not for my age group, because I'm 13 years old. I said, it's not for my age group. So who is this for? He was like, it's for, and he put names in my heart. He said, it's for those people. And these people, guys, are in college. They are older than me. They And I'm just, I was so happy. I was like, he said, if you let the words flow into the paper, I got you said and he told me he was down here he was all the way down there but now you're right here I was like God am I like somewhere up here he said no he said you're right here because when you get finished with my plan you will be up here you will be my when when you get finished you will be my my plan for you is it's great it's amazing just let me let me let me be with you let me stay with me. I got you. I no worries. It was he said no worries, no stress. I got you. And just know I love you and you're my child. And I started crying in that moment because I said I'm loved by God. Amen. And yeah. Good job, man. Grace.
Bible tells you you're not enough. You always are, and even if you feel like you'll never get out of it, there's always a way out. And God, he'll never leave you, and he'll always be there for you. Even when you feel like you isn't, he'll always be there, and he'll always be the right person to come to when you feel alone. That's good. Hello, I'm Macy. So pretty much this youth camp, well, for the past couple years, I guess, I've everyone has different addictions. So I had this certain thing that no one really knows about. And going into it, I, I never thought about it. Because thinking about it made me feel like I wasn't worthy of anything or to be God's child because I don't know. Um, so I never really thought about it or would never think about it. Um, I knew it was there, but I didn't really pay any attention to it at all. So going into camp, my mom, she was, it was after like prayer one morning. My mom was talking about cutting the strings, and so she told us all to go up to the front and get on our knees and just give it all to God, and I didn't really think it was something God could take away, and I didn't think that it was possible to, you know, I don't know, get out of it or stop or whatever. So going up, my mom just said, you get on your knees and surrender and give it to God, and and. So I did, and I believe that um, I am out of it, and I believe that um, I don't have to be, feel guilty or feel ashamed or hide from God anymore, and I believe that I'm done with it. <laughs> How y'all doing today? So, all right, this this year at camp, I just, like, had, like, the courage to, like, lay hands on people and pray for them. As, like, I see, like, them changing their lives, well, changing their lives for the better and everything. Then, like, I had, like, an encounter with God, but it wasn't, like, God saying, like, I'm going to do this, like, saying, like, exactly what I'm going to do. But it was, like, just people telling me, like, that uh, I'm supposed to, like, help with kids and everything, like, be like their shepherd, lead them, and help guide them, and like, kids will come come to me, like, for help and help in any kind of way and everything, and that's about it. Y'all have a great day. Um, we're just going to share for three more minutes just some quick testimonies real quick about what happened, just because we think you need to hear this as well. Yeah, so um, supernatural time at camp, definitely uh, the, the healing power of God was available. Um, so one night during service, we had these two young men. Um, they were actually brothers from, you know, same family, and they came in. And after church, after service, um, their youth pastor found them outside, and they um, both had type 1 diabetes, and they wore packs attached to their body. Um, so they would receive insulin several times a day, um, couldn't live without it. And so their youth pastor went outside after ser service and found them getting ready to throw their packs in the trash because they said, we're healed. We are completely healed. And so before camp, we found out later they had told their mom that they were um, going to come home healed from diabetes and so man their faith was just really in action you know they were ready to receive and so um the the youth pastor she just took them and she said well i'll hold on to them you know and they had equipment with them to check their levels daily and um he said i they said we have been checking our levels several times a day and they are completely normal wow. so praise god so good. they went home completely Amen. healed by Amen. the power of Jesus. And um, then also we had another lady who went, she threw her back out right when she got to camp and had several um, other symptoms that 
you know, mean that that's really severe. Um, could barely walk, but she had a really big part to play um, that week. And so she said, you know, what? I'm just going to press through. And uh, during prayer one morning, Matt Rocket um, went to her and said, man, I really feel like God is just wanting me to pray for you. She had not said anything about her back to anyone at this point, even her husband. And um, when he prayed for her, her back was completely healed and every symptom that she had went away. Praise God, it was so good. Um, and then also on the way home, we got, we've been getting testimonies, you know, just so many good things. Um, but we were coming home, we get a message from a youth pastor and all these pictures, if you have them, you can put them up real quick. Um, this youth group stopped at a restaurant and the owners ended up closing it down because like revival was taking place. They were, um, people were getting healed, employees were getting saved and um, the owner getting filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues right there when they stopped. I mean, that's a pretty amazing thing. So praise God, we believe the Spirit of God is moving. It doesn't end just because we left yeah. camp, but man, this is just a launching point um, for each and every one of us to just move forward in the things that God's began. So good. The Amen. good work that God started in us, he'll see it to a full and flourishing finish. Amen. You know, would you stand on your feet right here, and, and I'm going to ask you something, and we've got a Another service here coming up here pretty soon, but if you say, you know what, I want to surrender my everything to God again. There's no age limit on God's anointing. This is for you right here in this moment. Would you just lift both hands up towards heaven right where you are? Yeah, all over. I surrender everything that I am. I'm available, you don't have to say that, I'm available to you right now. That's what you're saying right now in this moment. The good work that God started in your life, he's going to see it to a full and flourishing finish. In this moment, we're surrendering our will. And we're saying, not our will be done, but your will be done, God, in our life, in our minds, in our hearts. So would you take like 15 seconds right here and you speak to God right where you're at with both hands up, surrendering your all to him. Father, we thank you for your presence that's in this place today. God, we honor you for who you are. And once again, we say, we surrender our all to you. You use us how you want to use us. Let us be your hands. Let us be your feet. And let us be a mouthpiece for you. In the name of Jesus. And with every head bowed and every eye closed just for a moment, if you say, Pastor Matt, I want to make sure before I walk out of this place that I'm going to heaven. God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you. And also, if you're watching online, pay close attention for the next few minutes. You want to make sure that you're going to heaven. It's a choice that you can make right here, right now in this moment. You don't know if you were to die today, if you'd go to heaven or hell. It's real. It's, it's a real. It's real. You say, I want to make a decision and ask Jesus to come into my life and save me. Would you raise your hand right now? Yeah, all over here. Yeah, keep your hand up high. If you have your hand up, would you put both hands up towards heaven, surrendering your all to him right here in this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're working on the hearts of people. If you're watching online, you respond right now. There's some ways and there's something on the screen right now, things you can do right here in this moment. You do that as well and let us know what you're doing. Would everyone in this room repeat this after me? Say, dear God in heaven, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. I believe that you died, you were buried, and you rose again. And today, I declare that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Come into my heart. 
forgive me and save me right now. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who now lives in me. He leads me and he guides me from this day on in Jesus' name. And everybody that agrees, shouts, amen.